Hello everyone, welcome to the Open AGI Forum today. I'm Wei Lu from CSDN and currently we are live streaming from Delft, Netherlands. We are honored to have Sophia Turner to join us today. Welcome Sophia. Thank you. Could you briefly introduce yourself to our, our audience first? Sure, my name is Sophia. Um, I've been working in programming languages for the last about 18 years or so. 18 years, so long. Yeah, it's been quite a while. And the first question is that you participated in creating TypeScript and later uh, joined Mozilla, focus on compiler errors, IDA support, and Rust usability efforts. What do you see as the main difference in design, uh, the in design philosophy and target user between TypeScript and Rust? Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the big differences with TypeScript is that it was it already had JavaScript as the kind of established standard. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to push that forward by a little bit. By adding types yeah. to that, we could actually push it forward. Um, and it had a much bigger audience to start. Mm -hmm. With Rust, we had to kind of convince the world that it was possible to do safe systems programming. And that was a very different style of thing. Yeah. Oh, OK. The focus, so that, that uh, Rust is mainly focused on security? Yeah, it's got all that, that security yeah. Um, yeah. focus. And we had to. Because C and C++ were the standard, yeah. everyone knew those. No one thought it was possible to have a systems language that was safe by default. Mm -hmm. And then Rust had to kind of prove itself. Yeah. You have worked on many influential, influential projects like TypeScript and Rust, and now a member of the new shell core team. How are you transient between these uh, communities, and what strategies do you adopt to maintain the effective communication and collaboration mm -hmm. with these diverse groups? Yeah, I feel like yeah. each one is different. Um, with New Shell, what we do is we have every week, we have a meeting, and anyone who wants to can join. And so it makes things very flat. So there's mm -hmm. no one that's like the boss. Uh -huh. um, but sometimes when I'm there, I think they treat me as the boss, but I try not to act like the boss. Oh, okay. And just try to make it possible that anyone who wants to contribute can just come and be part of the conversation. And when they um, are part of the conversation, they're actually helping to create the future of New Shell as part of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I really like that kind of open style that New Shell has. Okay. At Mozilla, you, had, you were involved in Rust compile error handling and ID support. Could you share specific improvement or achievement, how this improvement impacted the everyday programming experience of the rest of yeah. the uh, developers? I mean, one, of the, one of the things I'm kind of proud of that I worked on was that when we made the Rust error messages, that was one of the first things I did when I joined Mozilla, was mm -hmm. kind of design the new error messages. Yeah. And now that design is in all kinds of different tools. So lots of compilers and lots of command line tools use that, that style of error message. So um, that kind of influence, I, I don't know, I just really appreciate that I have been able to do that. OK. So how has your experience in the Rust core team influenced your view on programming language or mm. development tools? Yeah, I think the core team kind of taught me once you get to a certain size. So when I joined Rust core team, there was millions of Rust developers and hundreds of Rust contributors in the different teams. And that's a very different thing than starting. So when I started on TypeScript, it was quite small. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's you know, a team of like 10 or 12 of us that did all of the TypeScript mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, so it's just kind of thinking in a much larger scale in terms of the project. Scales, yeah. So what quality or strategies should that successful programming language call team process? I think, in your opinion. I think one of the main ones is being transparent, Trans being able to understand the direction of the project, being able to contribute to the direction of the project, and being able to kind of, um, kind of feel the, if I could say it this way, feel the philosophy. So you know the direction and you kind of agree to it, mm -hmm. and then everyone pulls together. I feel like that is really important. Um, if everyone pulls in different directions, it's hard to go in a direction. Yeah. You stay still. So as one of the creators of the Rust leader console, uh, leadership console, how do you view the role of the community governance in the success of an open source project? Yeah, that, 
Um, that's really, really complicated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the short answer is that having something that can survive any single person leaving, mm -hmm. right? If the project requires a certain person to, to be there mm -hmm. for it to succeed, then it's not a healthy project. Oh. And that's okay early on when the project's small, but over time you need something that kind of lives on and on and on mm -hmm. as people come and go. Because people have lives, you know, they come, they go. But the project for it to be strong needs to be able to, to continue. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. So what's unique about the rest of the community in this regard? What is when? Uh, what's unique? Unique mm -hmm. about Rust I think, community in this. Yeah, I think one of the most unique parts of the Rust community is it has a very strong sense of what's right, has a very strong sense of um, trying to, like, like whatever is going on, trying to understand what the right thing is and then to, to push for that. So it doesn't get lazy with itself, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's always trying to be a little better. Okay. So given your extensive experience in programming language and development tools, what are your expectations or predictions for RASTA's future development? Mm, I mean, I feel like it's, it's still getting started. We're, I mean, we're seeing Rust in different new industries, um, seeing it in things like the automobile industry a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. continuing to grow. I, I don't know where the limit is. I think it's just going to keep, um, keep growing. Okay. So what's the key issues or challenges do you think it needs to handle for the coming years yeah, for the I think development? One of the, well, there's like kind of a two-part answer, I think, for that. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is that we were talking about the vision and everyone understanding which direction they should go. Yeah. So it kind of needs a team to help set that direction and to describe that direction based on the companies that are using Rust and the people that are using Rust. All that information can turn into, okay, now we go this direction, yeah. mm -hmm. and then we go that direction. I think that would help um, as it continues to grow. Yeah. And with your experience, what excites you most uh, about future development or new features in new shell? Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I'm really excited about getting to 1.0. I feel like a lot of people are waiting for a new shell to be 1.0 before they actually try it. Yeah. And more and more I'm seeing people that were kind of hesitating on new shell try the recent versions mm -hmm. and saying, well, okay, I'm not going back to batch. I'm not going back to other, yeah. other shells. So we know it's got the right like, mixture of features to really attract people to it mm -hmm. and to keep them using it. Um, but we need it to get more stable and we need it to hit 1.0. So people can start building out, you know, real programs with it. Yeah. So finally, a little bit about my domains. Mm. Do you have any plans to leverage AI or LLM in New Shell? No, <laughs> not yet. Yeah, I don't. You're about to try it. No, <laughs> I, I'm not an expert in AI. I'm not yeah. an expert in LLM. So um, someone may bring that in, and you know, for example, completions or whatever it might be. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's but what I mean. So I'm not an expert in <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Sophia, for the insightful discussion. And thank you for the uh, developer watching. That's all for today's interview. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.